Welcome to the One Church Podcast. Within this podcast, you'll encounter content that will instill hope, fortify your faith, and offer practical, real-life insights. We are excited to share this message to spread the love of Jesus and inspire you to fulfill your unique purpose. Now please stay tuned as we prepare to delve into this week's message. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. It reads, But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Amen and amen. Today I want to bring a message titled, The Refining Fire. The refining fire. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me, Danny? Yeah? All right. Would you pray for me, folks? Pray for me to bring this word faithfully as the Lord has given it to me, and also that there would be some spontaneous downloads and revelations that the Holy Spirit cannot bring through notes or preparation, but can come if you have faith in your seats. You could draw some things out of me. Not because Pastor C, but because the Lord is bringing something to you as well. Amen? So I want to encourage you. If you want to shout amen, what are you going to shout? Amen. Amen. If you want to say hallelujah, what are you going to say? Hallelujah. If you want to say preach, Pastor C, what are you going to say? Preach. Hey, yeah, there you go. Let's go. If you don't know something about me, one thing I like is fire. I like fire. I like to play with fire. If you know, see me, <laughs> some of you are shaking your heads. Yes, you know, or you will know. I like July 4th. You know, my brother puts on an amazing fireworks display. If you don't know, just drive by Franklin Square. The whole sky is lit up around Poppy Avenue. I like doing that, but it started very young. I, it didn't start in my adulthood. It started when I was about four, four years old. My affinity towards fire. We were living in Brooklyn. I was four years old, and my parents weren't home at the time. My grandparents were, but they were getting ready to step out for something regarding ministry, probably to visit some family. I was home. My little brother, Lince, was just a little baby, probably one, obviously. And um, right before my grandmother uh, left for this uh, visit or wherever they were going, my uncle was there as well. My dad's youngest brother was there on the other side of the apartment, and I was in the kitchen with my grandmother, and I saw she was getting ready to leave, but I knew where the lighter was, and I found some paper bags in the kitchen. And I said, oh, this could be interesting. And I put half of the paper bag outside the window. I don't know if my parents know the full story. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> half of the paper bag outside the window, and half was inside, and I said, oh, maybe I'll just light one half, and then stick it out and close the window, that should, and I could just watch it. I did that. I lit the half and stuck it outside, closed the window, the other half. In the... It got to a point, you know what happened, right? The closed window did not shut the burning paper bag, and the burning paper bag spread into the inside half of that paper bag. The fire spread into the inside half of the paper bag. My grandparents had already left. My uncle is with my baby brother in the other side of the apartment, Watching him taking care of him, I'm alone in this kitchen, watching flames starting to spread. It got into the inside half of, of that paper bag, and there was curtains around the window. It caught on the curtains, and I'm like, uh-oh. And I think I ran to the other side of the apartment. I told my uncle something somehow and told him to get to the kitchen. And by that time, the fryer had spread up the curtains and was starting to spread around the kitchen And I think he had to call the fire department, but by the time they got there, he somehow managed to put that fire out in that kitchen. He still has burn scars on his arms. He reminds me whenever we see each other. (laughs) And And he put the fire out without major damage, but, uh, and he protected myself, my brother, and the the apartment and the building uh, from catastrophe. And I don't know what he explained to the fire department when they came and all that, but I don't know what else happened. Everything else, I just blanked out. I did not pass out. I just blanked out. And thank God for his protection. But that's where my affinity towards fire started. 
I still have that affinity. I don't try to burn things down now. I try to contain it. But if there's fire, if there's an opportunity to light something, I'll look for it. And I realize there's different types of fire. There's fire that can destroy. There's a fire that can help cook meals. There's a fire that can bring heat. There's a fire that produces uh, good things. There's a fire that's used intentionally. There's a fire that started accidentally. There's different types of fire. And in different types of fire, it comes to different types of temperatures. If there's a candle flame, I'm sure you've probably put it out with your fingertips, correct? Maybe, if you're brave. My wife says, I have really soft and dainty hands. I can't hold hot pots for too long. I'll give it up. While she can just hold the thing, grab it, take it to the other side of the counter, and I'm like, wow, how do you do that? But my fingers start to burn as soon as I just touch it. We can handle different types of temperature. We can handle different types of heat. They say that even in different colors of the flame, you can see that there are different temperatures. If you see a deep red fire, it's about 1,100 to 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. An orange or yellow fire is about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But a dazzling white flame is the hottest flame, they say. About 2,400 to 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest I've put my oven temperature for a fire, to get that fire going is what? What's the highest you've ever taken your temperature? The, the, sorry, the uh, oven. Uh, maybe 425, 450. Depends on what you're cooking, right? You said 500? Someone said 500? Wow, you're brave. Or you stay in the low 200s. But you realize if you have an oven that does self-cleaning, that thing can go up to 800, 900 degrees. While we're trying to scrub and clean with our energy and the chemicals and stuff and not get everything, if you just turn up the heat to the highest level, it will actually dry up all the dirt and turn it into ash, and all you have to go in is wipe it off. There's a purpose in higher heat. A pizza oven at a pizzeria gets up to between 900 to 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Next time you get pizza, go ask the pizza maker. What's it at? Metals, iron melts at 3,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Gold melts at 1,900 degrees Fahrenheit. I share all this to share with you. In the Bible, like we just read from Malachi, that God will put us through a fire, take us through a fire, so that he does not destroy us, but he'll raise temperatures and seasons of our life through trials and tribulations and struggles and challenges, not to destroy us, but to refine us. Because it says like refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purify us like silver. He will make us like gold and silver. But we have to understand gold and silver does not come out pure. It comes out of chunks of ore. But the pure gold is inside that big chunk. And how do they get the pure gold out of that big chunk or that big ore? They turn it into smaller pieces, smaller chunks. They put it into a little crucible, and they put that crucible with that precious metal into a furnace that produces a heat so hot and so high that it would start to burn the metal and melt the metal or the chunk of ore. And as you burn that fire and the metal burns in that fire, the impurities within that metal will start to come to the top. And when the the impurities start to come to the top, the goldsmith will stand there watching that fire, watching that crucible, watching the metals, making sure that as it comes to the top, he will take something and just skim the impurities off the top. But then guess what? There's still more impurities inside that melted metal. He'll put it back in the fire because he wants to get the pure gold out of that ore. You and I have to understand that there is something so pure inside each and every one of us. He created us from the beginning with something so pure in his mind and he had a great plan for us. But because of sin in this world, we have been born into this world in sin. 
And there's so much impurity within us with our knowing and without our knowing, with our doing, and without us consciously doing anything. There is so much inside of us, our personality, our character, our past, our hurts, our pains, everything that we have in our life. There's so much impurity within us, but he takes us through a refining fire so that he could melt us down to bring the impurities out and he can skim it off and then take us to the next step, level as pure refined gold you guys with me this fire sorry this fire is necessary in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 9 it says I will bring the third part through the fire he's talking about he says in the previous verses he said about the people of Israel he says two thirds will not go through the fire two thirds will just go away completely but there is a third that will be put through the fire and I want to tell you something when the Lord is looking down on his church and this earth at this time just because you go to church just because you attend church does not make you a completely devoted follower of Christ I'm bringing a word that's going to challenge us this morning because I want to ex- us to experience signs, wonders, and miracles, but we can't experience signs, wonders, and miracles until we go through the refining fire. In Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10, it says, Behold, I have refined you, but not with silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. I want to encourage somebody that's going through a fiery season right now. Or has gone through something. Or you may be anticipating something's coming or something's off right now. I want to tell you the Lord is taking you through this refining season. Not to destroy you or to consume you. Not to be a consuming fire. But if you're a child of God, it is not to consume you. It is to refine you. And make you more precious. And to bring the purity of who he is. Out to the surface. Out to the top. Out for the glory of God. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 3, it says, The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. Psalm 66, verse 10 through 12, it says, For you, O God, have tested us. You refined us like silver. I want to encourage everyone here. Every instance in the scripture that we talk and we see about the fire that God uses about refining There is a purpose in the fire. There is a purpose in the fire. The question we have to ask ourselves and we have to ask the Lord when you're in the fire is, Lord, what are you doing in me? What are you trying to find out and get out of me? What are the impurities that still are embedded in my heart? What are the things that are still embedded in my mind? What are the still th- things that are still embedded in my life, in my habits, in my practices, in my behaviors, in my speech, in my thoughts? What is still embedded inside of me that no one else knows about, that my spouse doesn't know about, that my family doesn't know about, that my friends don't know about, that only God would know about, and he wants to get to that hidden thing, and that's why he will take us through a fire and a refining season in our life. So when we get put into that fiery season, when we get put into that hard trial, we have to ask ourselves, what is the purpose of this? I think a few weeks ago, we heard Pastor Bobby Johnson put it in his, another way. <clears throat> he said, if, if we're going through something, we could ask the Lord, what's in it for me? You guys remember that? What is this for? What am I going to get out of that? I think that was the specific. What am I going to get out of this? The Lord is asking us to go through this fire And ask ourselves and ask the Lord, what is the purpose? What are you trying to to get out of me? I believe a few things. He's trying to make us more righteous. He's trying to make us more righteous. When I studied about this process of refining metals or gold, it says the the goldsmith will uh, go through this process and he may go put that uh, crucible with the metal that's already melted back in in that fire, not just once. Not just twice, not just three times, up to seven times he'll put that crucible back in that fire so that he can get to the purest form of that gold. You know when he stops? You know when he stops? He stops when he can see himself in the metal. He stops when he can see himself in that melted gold. Doesn't that make it so clear to us? 
until Jesus sees himself in us, he's going to keep putting us through the fire. So if you're going through the fire, he's trying to get to see, until I see myself in you, you're still going to go through the fire. You don't like the fire? Let him get all of it out on the first time. Let him get all of it out on the third time. Let him get all of it out on the sixth time. Or however many times, I'm not putting a number on it, but I want to tell you, until he sees himself, until we have the mind of Christ, until he sees his reflection on us, and so that we can reflect the glory of God in this world, he's going to keep us in the fire. So I'm telling you, this fire that we're going through, that is not to destroy us, it is to refine us. And that refining is to reflect himself and his glory in and through our lives. So I want to tell you, I want to tell you and myself, When you get rejected for something that, you, that was meant for you, when you get rejected that you were qualified for, when you get rejected, I don't know why I'm saying that, when you get rejected for something that was, that was coming to you, when you get rejected, you got to check your heart, see, hey, why did I want that? Why did I expect that? Why did I feel like, hey, that was mine or I deserved it? Was there pride in my heart? Was there pride in my mind? And maybe he's trying to get it out because of that rejection. Hmm? What are you going through? What are you going through? In what area of your life are you going through it? And the Lord is saying, I want to see myself in you in that area. Until I see myself in you in that area... I will keep you in that fire. I will keep putting you back in that fire. I'll take you out for a season. It'll feel like, oh, the fire stopped. No, no, no. He just took you out of the furnace, and he's just checking on you, and it'll feel like, oh, things got a little cooler. Things got a little slower. Things got a little less hectic. Things got a little less chaotic. And anyone ever feel like that? You feel like, oh, oh it's a good season? Oh, no. Now, why does it feel like I got it? it's getting a little hotter again? Why does it feel like it's getting a little harder again? Because he said, I, I, I got a little, some things off of you. I skimmed off everything that I could bring out at that point, but there's a little something else left in you that I got to bring out. I'm going to put you back in the fire until I see all of me in all of you. But here's the beautiful thing. I I believe it's, it's he's not a God that is trying to destroy us with fire. He is a God that cares for us. He is a compassionate and caring God. He is a good father, and he wants to see the best out of his children, in his children, and for his children. When you get to the point of becoming a father or a mother or a parent, you do everything you can to make sure that they have everything they have, they can, to do things to the best of their ability, to have things better than you had it. Is that a testimony of any parent here? Any parent here that's a testimony? Just lift your hand if that's your testimony. If that's your testimony, come on, lift it up. Thanking the Lord. How many of you can say, let's keep it lifted. How many of you can say the Lord has helped you to do, provide more than what you had? Hey, testimony time. Come on. You're not boasting. You're thanking the Lord. I'm thankful for what I grew up with. But I know my parents always said, we're doing this so that you have a better life. And I'm starting to say, we're doing this so that you have a better future. So do not ever settle for what your parents had. Do not ever settle for what your parents experienced. I tell my children, I'll tell every person in the next generation, do not settle for what you grew up with. You go for more, you go for more, you go for more. There is more opportunity out there. There is more that God has for you. There's been more resources given to you. I have been blessed with resources that my parents were never blessed with. And they testified and I testify. But I will tell you it is not for us. It is for the glory of God and it's to see a generation be blessed so that they can say, look what the Lord has done. And I'm going to steward this thing well. And I'm going to make sure that no matter what fire, no matter what trial that I go through, that they would see that their parents came out stronger through that season. Not just parents, parents. Marriages, singles, whoever. You have to come out of this fiery season purer and stronger out of the fire. Hallelujah. He cares for us. He wants to make us more righteous. 
But he also wants to make our faith more complete. <laughs> you know, we've seen in the news these crazy forest fires, right? And how they destroy acres and square miles of land, right? Around Canada, the Canadian wildfires in the, out in the west. You've seen what it does. You, 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 you look at an incinerator and they have a fire so hard that it, uh, hot sorry, that it consumes. There's fires that can destroy. There's fires that can consume. But this fire that God is putting, th- putting us through is to make us more righteous and to make us more pure in Christ. But just like any fire, fire is dangerous, right? Fire is dangerous. Like I shared, the, my experiences, fire was dangerous. It could have been more dangerous. So the refining fire is not an easy fire. It's not an easy fire, but it's a necessary fire. I almost titled this message as the essential fire or the fire that I need. And I don't, I'm not just talking about the fire of the Holy Spirit, but the refining fires of trials in our life We need those fires in our life. Do not, please, please hear my heart on this. Do not try to jump out of the refining fire. You think you're being consumed? You're not. If you run and jump out of the refining fire, you'll end up in the consuming fire. I'd rather stay in the refining fire than end up in the consuming fire. That consuming fire is the fire of hell and brimstone. But if you stay in the fire of refining fire, that is you are in the hands and in the care of the almighty God, your heavenly father. I'm telling the church at large, our church, but the body of Christ, there is coming a time that the church is going to be tested by fire. And it will see, we will see the, the pure wheat and the chaff. We will see. We will see clearly. And I want to challenge this church. Please, when the fire comes, let us be tested to survive the fire. Let us not be consumed in that consuming fire, but be found in the refining fire. The refining fire that was started by the Lord, that is being maintained by God. But here's the other thing. The Lord did not abandon us in the fire. He is watching us in the fire. <laughs> that was the, for me, that was the part that gave you the most peace. The goldsmith never walks away from the crucible in the fire. He's always got his hand connected to it through a, a rod, and he always keeps his eye on that pot. He's always keeping his eye on the metal that's melting. The eyes of the Lord, I want to tell somebody, you thought you've been abandoned in the fire. You thought you were like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. You're going through some fiery seasons, and you think that enemies and people put you in the fire. No, no, no. God allowed that fire to come in your life so that he could reveal himself as a fourth person in the fire and say, hey, guess what? They think they put you in the fire. No, no, no. I am in control. I am sovereign. I am about to reveal myself to you, to your generations, to your family, to the community, to the church, to the for the glory of God, I'm about to reveal myself to you as the ever-present help in trouble. I will walk with you through the fire, the Lord says in Isaiah. Hallelujah. We, how many of us can testify the Lord has walked with me through some fire? Hey, I got a little young man in the back lifting up his hand. How many of you can testify the Lord has walked with me through some fire? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when we handle the fire, there's got to be some, the peace is there that the Lord is there. The Lord is watching. The Lord cares. But we also have to handle that fire, handle that season with care. Because the fire of God, the fires that he put us, puts us through, the refining fire. He wants to use it to bring out his holiness in us. His holiness, not my holiness, but the holiness of God in us. That purity that he's looking for, that image of himself that he's looking for, the reflection, 
That reflection has to be the reflection of holiness. Holiness in our thinking, holiness in our speaking, holiness in our heart, holiness in our actions, holiness from the inside out, holiness. You can't pursue God without holiness. In 1 Peter it says, be holy for I am holy. Be ye holy for I am holy, says the Lord. The Lord is trying to bring out His holiness through us, in us, by putting us through the fire. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Amen? When you go through the trials, it is to bring perseverance, and that perseverance is to bring maturity so that we can be made complete. If we are still going through fire, God is not complete with us. His completeness and His fullness is not yet revealed in us. So allow ourselves, like I said before, don't jump out of the refining fire. Submit yourself into the hands of God and let Him lead you through this fire. Let Him walk with you in this fire. Let Him talk with you in this fire. And maybe this is the time that you're going to hear Him more clearly. Even though the flames that may rage on and the sound of fire may be so loud, that's Maybe where you'll hear the gentle whisper of God or you'll feel the ever-present help presence of God. I want to tell you right now, to tune your ears, tune your heart, tune your mind to the Lord in the fiery seasons of life. He will speak to you. He will speak to you. It's been through the harder seasons of uh, and those trials in our life where we've seen and heard the Lord. I want to say more clearly. Sometimes I wonder, there have been seasons, God, where are you? Why are you so silent? Especially in times when I felt empty and I felt like, hey, what's going on here? You know, you got to still show up week by week and bring a word. But on the inside, you feel empty and you feel like, where is God? And you're asking God, give me a word, give me something. But I'm, the, I'm, I'm thankful that even in those silent times, he was there watching. But I want to testify to you, the Lord was even more clearly present in the more the fiery seasons of our our life it didn't feel like it at first but he revealed himself throughout the process and even in hindsight we saw how the Lord was leading us in that fiery season I want to encourage somebody here right now just look up for a moment you may not feel like God is with you right now and you may be feeling and searching God and asking God, where are you? I want to encourage you and tell you, standing on this word, that in a few weeks, months, you will look back on this season and you will see how the Lord was really working things out. And that even when you felt like you were walking alone in the fire, that God was actually leading you through the fire. It could be in your workplace. I'm looking at people that are having struggles at work. It could be people that are having struggles at home. It could be people that have struggles in your health or your finances or in your relationship, whatever it may be, in your marriage. You have to believe and trust, if you're a child of God, that the Lord is leading you through this fire. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, it says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means, if by any means... I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Folks, we want the life of Christ. We want the miracles of Christ. We want the, uh, the ministry of Christ. We want the, all the great and good things of Christ. But we avoid the suffering of Christ. You can't get to the resurrection power until you go through the suffering and the death of Christ on the cross. 
We all want to jump to the glory. We want the signs, wonders, and miracles. And that's why maybe the Lord has been telling me, don't take the church to the end. Take the church to the whole process and lead the church through the suffering. Lead the church to the purifying. Lead the church to the refining. Lead the church to the cleansing. And let that cleansing lead to the glory. The suffering has to happen before you can experience the resurrection. So don't jump out. Don't jump out on God. Don't jump out on your relationship. Don't abandon your relationship with God in the refining fire. But get closer and stronger with the Lord in the refining fire. Because your resurrection day is coming. Because your glory day is coming. And I want to tell you to hold on. Just hold on, church. (laughs) I referenced this verse earlier. Isaiah 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. And the flames will not set you ablaze. The Lord just wants to keep... Reminding us here today. He's going to come and bring a fire in our a fire in our in our personal lives. He'll take our marriages through some fire. He'll take our parenting and our children through some fire. He'll take our church through some fire. And he'll take our community and our city and our nation through some fire. But you have to see and trust that that you as a child of God will not be burned in the fire. Let us have a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego testimony. And I close with this word, or this point, and I'll bring the scripture. This fire is a blessing. This fire is a blessing. This fire is a blessing. Kayla, this fire is a blessing. That challenge that you're facing in your health, it's a blessing. The struggle in your home, that's a blessing. The situation at work, it's a blessing. The financial lack, that's a blessing. It's a fire. This fire is a blessing. In 1 Peter 1 verse 6 and 7 it says, So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Someone say little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. What will these trials show? In another version it says, this this happened so that the genuineness of your faith will be proven. Here's the question. How genuine is our faith? That's the question in that verse. How genuine is that faith that you have? Where is our faith put? How genuine is that faith? So that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. If you, you know your faith is more precious. Because there is a temperature in which gold will actually be destroyed. There is a temperature. If it gets to the higher temperatures, that metal that is being purified can actually be destroyed. And guess what? Here it's saying even gold can perish. Gold can be destroyed. But your faith can be proven to stand the test of fire, stand the test of time, stand the test of every struggle and challenge that you go through. The refining fire is to make sure that your faith is genuine and it can stand till the end day of your life. So when your faith remains, what remains? When your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole, sorry, to the whole world. When your faith remains through many trials, I want to ask everyone here, hold on in the trials. Please hold on. Don't give up on that person. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your life. Don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on the Lord. Do not give up on the Lord. Let your faith remain. You may lose everything else, but let your faith remain. When you lose your job, will your faith remain? When you lose that baby, will your faith remain? 
When you lose a loved one, will your faith still remain? When you lose that, that, that promotion, will your faith remain? When you lose that paycheck, will your faith remain? When you lose that, that, that health situation that you thought was progressing well, will your faith remain? My question to us is this. Will our faith remain strong and genuine at the end of every trial? And will we, will we look more like Christ when we come out of the refining fire? I want us to ask ourselves that. And before the team comes up, I want to just recite the lines of the song that we're about to sing. It says, purify my heart. Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold. It goes on to say, refiner's fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy. It's not to be rich. It's not to be famous. It's not to have this or know that person. It's not to have this many followers on social media or to have these many likes on Facebook. It's not to have this or that house. It's not to be in this area or that area. It's not to have the prettiest wife or the strongest husband. It is my heart's one desire is to be holy. Set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy. Set apart for you, my master. Here's the hard part. Ready to do your will. Thanks for joining us this week on the One Church Podcast. Be sure to tune in next week. If you are ready to start a relationship with Jesus, to make him the Lord of your life and receive salvation, please contact us at info at onechurchonline.com. We hope you found value in this podcast and we'd appreciate you sharing us with others and telling your friends and family to follow along with us. Our prayer and hope is that this podcast can reach countless lives. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube and Spotify at One Church LI and visit us at our website, onechurchonline.com. Here at One Church, our vision is to see Jesus. We exist to reach the one with the love of Jesus and for all to live like Jesus. We want to see Jesus in each other and we pray and believe there is more for you.